Good evening, Aaron and Jamie. We touched on a lot of topics today. Schools, sports, testing, the restrictions still in our bars and restaurants. We spoke with Representative Benninghoff first, so we'll start there tonight. I'd like us to start with schools. Uh, we know some districts, uh, we, we don't like to do in-person learning. We want the kids back in school, but it needs to be done in a safe way. We know districts are starting to go virtually. Um, your thoughts on what should happen with schools, and I know as a father, are you comfortable sending your kids to school for in-person learning? Well, ultimately, I think it's important to get the children in the classrooms for a multitude of reasons. I think they're going to learn better there. Uh, technology is great, but as you know, there are times where technology doesn't always work the way we want it to. I have a grandson who will be starting school very soon, and he goes to a Catholic school, and they have put all the provisions in place. They feel very strongly about having the children in the classroom to the best of their abilities. They have lots of safety measures. Uh, children will be wearing masks, and he and his three-year-old sister have worn masks when we go out in different public settings. I think sometimes children are probably even more compliant than adults are. You just express to them what it is that they need to do. Let's just say an 18-year-old, for argument's sake, who's in high school, a senior in high school, he somehow gets the virus out in the community. He's at a restaurant, he's somewhere out in public, and, and he gets this thing. He brings it into a school. He's in eight different classrooms, eight different teachers, uh, in possibly in the gym, the auditorium, the bathrooms, the hallways, the cafeteria. And there are teachers who may even be older. If there is in-person learning, isn't there a chance that one person comes in and gets this and gives it to a whole bunch of people in, in one day? Then what do you do? There's no different if that same student goes to the public uh, grocery store, if he goes to a park and participates in events with other students. Local schools can make local choices, what's best for them. No different if they had a sudden outbreak of chicken pox or something else. Let's move over to, to fall sports. I know you had sent a letter to the PIAA saying that they should move forward with fall sports. You know, the governor has recommended no sports until uh, 2021. Why does it make sense to move forward with, with fall sports, high school football? I think most parents who want to be there to support their children realize that part of their learning experience is in these collective sporting and um, other type of extracurricular activities. If you look at football, you know, obviously you have your pads on, but you're touching other players, you're sweating, things like that. Is it safe for these kids to be in all that physical contact with each other? The assumption is that if kids are not doing this, that they're somehow isolated in the bubble at home and not participating or congregating otherwise, and we know that's not the case. The PIAA, we're encouraging them to make decisions uh, based on whatever science or benchmarks that they feel are best. Restaurants and bars, it's been about a month since the governor put these uh, restrictions back on restaurants and bars, closing some of them 25% capacity. We do know the governor has, uh, has a $96 million in state grants going to small businesses throughout the state. Is that enough? What else has to be done or does the governor just have to ease up on these restrictions? 25% capacity, these businesses are gonna go under. They're not gonna be able to succeed. And frankly, that's a loss for the community and the economics of that community. I know some people think we're trying to choose between whether to keep people healthy or to have businesses operating. It's really not an and or if, it's about how we strike a balance between the two of them. 